Hi everyone, Rebecca here. I'm back for another go uh, at telling you or talking to you about the Children's Book Council of Australia Awards books for this year, 2020. Um, and I'm going to actually talk about the Eve Powell information books category now. So this is the uh, non-fiction section and books that present information. Now unfortunately I don't have the piece of paper that describes it but these books are actually for 0 to 18 years and they provide information for the children. So the first book that we have is this one here. Uh, it's called The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Ugly Animals. Now this book fascinates kids um, because it's full of all these what you would describe as ugly animals. Uh, so if you look in it you have the picture of the ugly animal, most beautiful drawings, I think they are, I think they're drawings, um, and then you have all the text, sorry, I'm just going to go over here, now if you hear my dog barking, it's because my children have let him outside, okay, so you have the information which has description, it has conservation status, it has a bit about it, the diet, it has location and habitat, and I really love this little bit here where you have the human and then you have the animal next to it to give you some idea of what size the animal is because for some people you know saying it's a meter long or 50 centimeters long doesn't make a lot of sense but as soon as you see it beside an, a human you think oh my gosh that is one huge fish okay uh, and so then you know they're not always complete animals sometimes you just get their heads but you know I look at that and think oh that must be a huge animal but then when you look at this you realize it's only the size of your hand so this is actually a really fascinating book for kids that love just reading about animals and looking at them and going oh yeah look at that what's that do really great book this one was actually a real surprise to me Yahoo Creek and Australian Mystery uh, by Toby Riddell because um, I this was brought to my attention last year I think it was it came into the library and I just had a quick look at it and went oh, no, I don't want that and so I didn't buy it at the time but now I've sat down and I've read it and I actually realize why this is actually a really important text this book is the story of the Yowie the Yahoo or the hairy man. Um, now for a while I worked in a place called Kempsey and the kids there used to talk about this hairy man. This hairy man was this really scary being and it was a human who, or humanoid I would say, had human shape but was covered in hair um, and it was just this mystery around the area. It turns out that it, it, it roams, the stories of, the, of this hairy man go as far down as Victoria and up into Queensland and this book is actually told the story of the hairy man is actually told through newspaper clippings and through the stories of an indigenous elder so if you look in the book now this is really fascinating because it it's saying you know this story is coming from newspapers so once you go into the text um, you have these quotes from the newspaper clippings so things like who has not heard from the earliest settlement of the colony, the Aboriginal people speaking of some unearthly animal or inhuman creature, namely the Yahoo Devil Devil or the Hairy Man of the Wood. From the Newcastle Morning Herald and Miners Advocate, 16 November 1876. And so it's just these beautiful pictures that have been created by Toby Riddell as, aside some of the clippings from newspapers. Okay. It's really an interesting read and it's a great way of talking to children and making connections between traditional story, uh, traditional ideas of the Indigenous people and then what early settlers might have seen. Uh, and then there is um, some connection. What, I'm just trying to find that there's an Indigenous leader in here, Elder, that um, speaks about the hairy man. Peter Williams um, of North West New South Wales. So, and then at the back you have some author's notes about the actual book. So that's a fascinating book. Then we have this one, Willem, a Berung story. Now this is the story of the Yarra River, um, told by Auntie Joy Murphy and Andrew Kelly. And Auntie Joy is uh, an, an elder of the, I'm just trying to wonder if, I'm sorry if I said that wrong. Um, and it tells the story of how, where the river starts starting in the morning and then following the river down as far as Melbourne. And it starts with this quote from William Barrack. 
Um, and then it goes on. So we start with, as new arises, turning cloud over the distant city red, Bunjil soars over mountain ash, flying higher and higher as the wind warms. Below, Birung begins its long winding path down to Palamwarin. So it's a really fascinating book because you need to use, or you don't have to, but you can get the um, children to look carefully at the pictures and try and work out what are they actually reading about because that we use, throughout the text is, are the indigenous words. Now once you've learned, you've read it once and you've talked about the, uh, the text, you can then go back into the back, into the glossary, or you might want to do it beforehand uh, so you say the words correctly and you can see how the words are pronounced and what those words mean and so there's a lot you know there's a lot of conversation that can be said not only about the the way that a river travels and the things that live in it but also about language and how language works so that's a really fascinating one too um now this one here young dark emu uh, a lot of people are familiar with i actually did a chat about this last year um and I'm just going to read from the back because it's the easiest way to describe it. In Young Dark Emu, A Truer History, Bruce Pascoe uses the diaries of early explorers and colonists to show us the Australian, to show us the Australia where Aboriginal people did build houses, did build dams and wells, and productively did farm the land. A truer history. Okay, so basically what's happened is Bruce Pascoe has gone back to early uh, explorers' diaries and um, found evidence of the way that indigenous people lived and he's put it under things like the land grab, agriculture, aquaculture, home, food storage and fire and then sacred places, sustainable futures and acknowledgements. Um, it's a really fascinating read that if you go back to look at my um, chat about this book and if you look at the comments there is some controversy around it but I still think it's a really important book to look at and to really think about how people who writes history to talk about who writes history and when the person that is the victor i suppose is the, better, the best word i can come up with gets to write history how they can change things to suit themselves to justify what they've done so that's a, another one um a hollow is a home this is a lovely book. This is another book that I picked up and was not really interested in, but I just sat down and re-looked re at it. Re I didn't re actually read the whole thing, but I looked carefully at it. Um, and the really thing, lovely thing that I like about this is it is very clear on what the book is about. What is a tree hollow? Um, now I'm just trying to see. The bit I really loved was actually this bit, how to use the book. It is given, gives really clear descriptions about how the book is set out and what all of that means. So what does it look like in particular to do with words. So if a word in the book is used just once, then in that sentence or in that paragraph, they'll actually tell you what that word means. However, if the word is used more than once in the book, it will be appear in bold within the text, which will then uh, ask you to then go into the glossary and find out what the word means. It talks about scientific names and how the names are used within the book, where do uh, animals and plants live. So it's talking about this map, so what the map means, and then also about the classifications of things. So it's really clear. If you're not understanding what's going on in the text, then you go back to the start here and have a look and think, oh, is that why they've done that? I really love it. It is a very Australian book because a lot of the uh, examples they provide in here are actually Australian examples. But with that said, they do refer to things like black bears and things like that. Um, it's just a lovely book. If you, if you have kids in your life that are fascinated by living things and where animals live and how they hunt and why they do the things, this creature feature is fascinating, absolutely fascinating, talking about all these different Australian animals. There was one animal I was like, ooh, it was a little rodent. Oh, man, this. Look at this. This little rodent that carries its, animal, its babies around. It's just fascinating. The 
I don't know, I don't think the cover does it justice, but I guess it's trying to get in a younger audience. Really, really interesting book. Okay, and the last one, I've gone on a bit here, uh, Searching for Cicadas. This is a beautiful book. This is about a young child that goes away camping with grandfather, uh, and the whole purpose of the trip away is to um, go searching for cicadas. So they go away camping, and it tells the story of the camping trip, and interspersed between the story are actually the facts. So here, if you look at this text here, you've got the story, and then over here, you've got a little bit about the cicadas. So we start off with, in the summertime, Grandpa and I go cicada watching. I collect the tent and sleeping bags, and Grandpa packs the cooler. And then over on the other side, it says, a cicada is a large flying insect. It has a stout body and six legs and two pairs of wings that fold over its back. And so the story keeps going on. They're actually looking for a particular type of cicada that is quite rare. Um, and they talk about how when people look for cicadas, they tend to look in trees for them. Whereas when these guys go hunting for them, they actually look on the ground because that's where the cicadas are going to come from. The nymphs are coming from. Um, it's just lovely. Like I had no idea about cicadas until I'd read this book. And I didn't realise there were different types, you know, and of course there are. So I'm just trying to remember the name of the particular one they're looking for. Um, black Prince, I think it was. Yeah, everyone wants to see a Black Prince. So this is just a lovely a book. If you're interested in insects or you have children that are interested in insects, this is a lovely book to look at as well. So that's the six. I'm just trying to check I've done all six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, that's six books. Um, I have no idea which one we win. I don't know what the, the announcement is on a Friday, and I actually don't know. They all are uh, really fantastic books, so I, I have no idea. Uh, if you get a chance, go and have a look for them. Go to local libraries, have a look. Um, I'm just trying to remember. Yahoo Creek is really hard to get. Uh, I tried to order it, um, and it just wasn't in the stores. It, they keep, it keeps selling out. Uh, and I think that's it. I've had a few books that I haven't been able to get, but, you know, Oh, and then I should say also with the um, this one, the Encyclopedia of Ugly Animals, another one has just been released. So uh, Sammy, yep, Sammy Bailey has put another book out. It's not Ugly Animals. I can't remember what it is, but quite fascinating. So have a look out for it. If you're in Canberra, hit paper, go to Paper Chain. Uh, they might have it. Um, and Syro is the one that did the Hollow is a Home. So just have a look around. Try and support your local bookstores. They're, some some of them are doing it hard at the moment, so try and do that. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye.